This video is part of the cybersecurity series of presentations. This video presents a brief overview of the different sub-areas of cybersecurity along with vulnerabilities and associated cyber attacks. Computer and network security is a general area that's of growing importance. It's often called cybersecurity, but cybersecurity is a much broader umbrella of topics. This includes threats, countermeasures, risks, stories, news, and all of the other events associated with it. And of course, cybersecurity also includes some mathematics, algorithms, designs, and software issues mixed in. Goals of security is to first ensure high reliability. Security tries to ensure that computers work and operate correctly and don't have unexpected problems or do not experience issues preventing them from operating correctly or worse, operating incorrectly, causing failure or even loss of life in some cases. The second goal is to ensure that the data is in is correct and accurate and consistent so that when the information is being processed or being exchanged, the integrity of the data is maintained and preserved. The third goal of security is to ensure confidentiality. This is an important goal in that information must be accessible only to the people who are authorized to view that information. Consequently, Security also deals with authentication and authorization aspects. Authentication is the mechanism used to identify an individual. That means that you log into a system and it's able to identify who you are. And authorization is the process of ensuring that you get access only to the information that you're authorized to access and not access other information. So this deals with, you know, file permissions, file uh, access control lists and other attributes that control the information that a user has access to. These are four important goals to keep in mind about security. Cybersecurity is a very diversified area and, and, it, and the term cybersecurity is now broadly applied to many different areas of study. First, it applies to computer security and computer security deals with programs and users on a computer and to maintain security at the computer level. So cybersecurity and computer security often includes analysis of malicious software like viruses, worms as well. Network security deals with the different layers in the network, including the physical layer where you physically have the wires, cables and such. And of course, network security also includes protocols and dealing with issues of protocols and so on. Cryptography is a common theme which deals with encrypting and decrypting information to avoid malicious users from intercepting and accessing the data. Cryptography plays an important role in computer security as well as in network security. Cybersecurity also includes processes and policies that are used for developing and testing hardware software. There are policies for maintaining passwords and requiring users to update passwords, so on and so forth. And all of these types of processes and policies fall under the umbrella of cybersecurity. And of course, physical security is part of cybersecurity. This is where you have physical measures like uh, retinal scanners, fingerprint readers, and so on to secure access to data centers and other physical facilities that house computers and the networking gear. Cybersecurity also deals with vulnerabilities in the different uh, uh, software and hardware, and as well as with cyber attacks that ensue from these vulnerabilities. Some of the common attacks are like software attacks. Uh, these include like buffer overflows. We'll do a deeper dive on buffer overflow in another presentation, and also to look at viruses, worms, and trojans or rootkits, and we'll do a brief overview of these terms. Um, network attacks include denial of service attacks and DNS hacking. Uh, email is a common source of attacks where you can do phishing via email. Um, web attacks include uh, SQL injection, cross-site scripting. So here, by 
putting in malicious information into uh, email uh, into uh, websites you can hijack information and of course you can also use web attacks as uh, what are known as cognitive cyber weapons uh, note that this is not social networking but this is social engineering where you can present incorrect or inconsistent information uh, causing confusion in the population and this is often used by state actors to hijack um, um, uh, elections and such. Keep in mind that not all hackers are not on all hacking is uh, meant for malicious purposes. Uh, there are ethical hackers who are testing these systems. There are researchers and consultants who work in cybersecurity who have to understand and uh, work with these attacks so that they can eventually defend against them. Buffer overflow is a software vulnerability which results from invalid array access. And if you have programs that have buffer overflows, a malicious user can take advantage of it. And we'll do a deeper dive into buffer overflow in another presentation. Um, software vulnerabilities include viruses and worms. Virus is a malicious program that can automatically copy itself but it requires some user intervention. That means the user has to open a program, double click a link, run a program, so on and so forth. Worms, on the other hand, are programs that can automatically propagate themselves over a network, and they do not need user intervention to propagate. So once they're on a network, they will be able to propagate across the network uh, by themselves without user intervention. Trojans and rootkits are malicious software that are usually typically get into a computer system as part of a phishing attack. Trojans are seemingly useful programs, but they hide a backdoor um, to perform some malicious operation on behalf of the attacker. Rootkits are set of programs that enable an unauthorized user to escalate their privileges. That means the user can become uh, like an administrator or the root user on a, uh, on a computer, thereby getting extra privileges that they were not authorized to have. A lot of these software attacks typically start via email uh, or downloading uh, and installing uncertified software or visiting uh, malicious websites. This is how a lot of these attacks start. And once the attack starts, the, uh, uh, there are different ways in which the attack can proceed from the once it is started. Network attacks uh, typically start with packet sniffing, particularly on wireless media. Keep in mind, wireless networks broadcast all of the data. That's how wireless communication happens. Essentially, a wireless communication is like a flashlight, except you can, the human eye cannot see the light, but essentially you are like flashing the light to send the data, to send ones and zeros. So everybody, all devices, can see those flashes and start recording the data. So there is not a whole lot you can do to protect yourself other than to encrypt the data on a lot of these um, uh, wireless networks. So data encryption and cryptography becomes very important here. If you don't encrypt your packets or your data, this leads to additional attacks such as password sniffing. That means the uh, a malicious user can sniff or read the passwords, which is being broadcasted by the uh, Wi-Fi devices. And you can also do other uh, HTTP attacks like stealing cookies, which contain your password or session information, so on and so forth. Other network attacks include what's known as a man-in-the-middle attack, where a person can insert a router um, in your network and start hijacking packets. So, for example, a person could walk out uh, to your um, um, networking box, like a roadrunner box that's in the corner of your street, and cut a wire and insert a their own router in the middle and start uh, stealing data and sniffing packets. Um, as part of this attack, you can also do what's known as D, uh, DNS or domain name service hijacking, where you can intentionally insert malicious routes and into DNS tables, thereby hijacking the traffic in the sense that instead of going to, when you say www.google.com, you might actually be going to a completely different server other than the Google server. And this could be because your the DNS entries have been hijacked, making you visit invalid or incorrect or malicious websites. Phishing is a common form of web, web attack where a malicious email or a website 
Typically, the emails have links to malicious websites that typically masquerade as a trusted organization. The intention of phishing is to have the recipient respond to that email so the email has a well-crafted message trying to motivate the user to perform some operation. And the objective of this phishing is to either steal personal information or to try and install malware on the computer. Another type of web attack is called cross-site scripting. Here, a attacker intentionally sends a malicious link to the user. The link has some extra uh, JavaScript and such as part of it. When the user clicks on the uh, link, the JavaScript associated with it runs in a browser, and to the browser, it doesn't. It thinks that the user wants to do this operation. And the browser ends up actually sending private data back to the attacker so the attacker can get information, uh, particularly from uh, information that is left by other websites that you have just visited in that browser session. So this cross-site scripting attack, if you were recently visiting your bank uh, website, it will be able to s possibly steal your bank information through this cross-site scripting attack. Another form of attack is called SQL injection. Here, the user intentionally provides malicious usernames or passwords. So for example, here, the password entered is not a actual password, but a piece of SQL uh, script. If this password is not being correctly processed by the server, it could actually work around the SQL, where one is equal to one always turns out to be true and the user gets this malicious user will be able to log in and start accessing data. So this type of a SQL injection attack happens in lots of websites even today. One of the key ways to improve security, particularly computer security when on, on, on the web, is to validate all of the user inputs, and that's of utmost importance. And there is never enough validation, so you could always do more validation on user input. Many techniques exist for improving the computer and network security. So suggestions is to use stronger cryptography, use uh, SSL certificates for HTTPS communication, use firewalls, use spam filters, uh, use phishing filters. These are software that can detect spam messages and automatically flag it. And of course, it's important to practice safe computing, that means uh, applying a little bit of common sense on the internet is not to download from unsafe websites, uh, not opening uh, attachments in in untrusted emails. Uh, generally, you should be you should not immediately trust things that you see on websites. You should be um, pursuing that and doing a little bit more study and analysis and cross validation. Uh, try to keep uh, on top of fi phishing scams and try to avoid them. Uh, keep your antivirus and uh, uh, spam filters up to date. So these are all just general common sense uh, practices, safe practices, so that uh, you can be uh, keep your cyber infrastructure secure. So in summary, cybersecurity is a very diverse area. Um, it deals with software, it deals with hardware, network layer, and also the overall physical security, like securing the data center and premises. The goals of cybersecurity is to increase reliability, integrity, confidentiality, and preserve authentication and authorization of the computing systems. Areas of cybersecurity are computer or software security that deals with software, including malicious software like malware, viruses. Network security deals with the networking layer, uh, sending and receiving data over different protocols. And of course, processes and policies also fall under the broad umbrella of cybersecurity, as well as physical security. Common vulnerabilities or cyber attacks include phishing, which is initiated via email. We'll do a deeper dive into phishing, uh, with uh, talking about uh, malicious software in terms of malwares and viruses. We can do packet sniffing with network attacks, cross-site scripting on websites, and SQL injection attacks on uh, websites that use uh, a SQL database at the back end. In subsequent presentations, we'll do a deeper dive on specific vulnerabilities and attacks.